the, the fact that not everything, and not every technology, but information technology follows an exponential progression. And that's not intuitive. Our intuition about the future is linear. That's hardwired in our brains. Uh, we really have to force ourselves to think in an exponential manner. And it comes to a very different conclusion because 30 steps linearly gets you to 30, 30 steps exponentially gets you to a billion. We are in fact doubling the power of these technologies every year. So 30 years means a billion fold increase. And we've already seen that and we're gonna see it again. Even that rate will, will speed up. In terms of pessimism, uh, our information about what's wrong with the world has grown exponentially. So a century ago, there could be a battle that wiped out the next village and you wouldn't even hear about it. Today, there can be some incident halfway around the world and we not only hear about it, we're immersed in it. So when I tell people, oh, this is the most peaceful time in human history, they go, what are you kidding? Don't you pay attention to the news? There was just you know, some violent incident this morning. Uh, well, that's because our information about what's going on uh, and all of the problems it has grown exponentially. And we are uh, sort of wallowing in negative information. People find that more interesting. The media tends to focus on violence because it's a more interesting story. Uh, Steven Pinker in his book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, documents an exponential decline in violence. One of the things that's fueling that is the rise of democracy, which in turn was fueled by the rise in communication technologies. So a century ago you could count the number of democracies on the fingers of one hand. Two centuries ago you could count the number of democracies in the world on the fingers of one finger. Uh, now not every country is a democracy but that is a consensus on the right way to govern ourselves. There are many you know functioning democracies and there are many other trends like that including greater abundance. Uh, people were very poor centuries ago and we settled those uh, disputes over resources violently, your chance of being killed was hundreds of times greater centuries ago. And lots of other things are better. The World Bank has reported a 90% decline in severe poverty in Asia d as those societies went from primitive agrarian economies to thriving information economies. Uh, so people are pessimistic because the algorithm they use to determine is the world good or bad is how often do they hear about something terrible. And that's really a very bad way to judge things. Yes, there are a lot of problems in the world, and I'm not a utopian thinker, uh, but there's no question that things are better. The poor today have amenities that kings and queens didn't have a century ago, like flush toilets or refrigerators, uh, radio, television, computers, free encyclopedia, et cetera, et cetera. Um, things are immeasurably better off. People forget what things were like. Thomas Hobbes described life just a couple centuries ago as short, life expectancy 37 in 1800, brutish, disaster prone, disease filled, poverty filled. Um, and people also don't have this exponential perspective. Uh, if, I were, if I thought linearly, if the world were linear, and we have uh, all this growing population, uh, we wouldn't be able to keep up with it. Uh, it's because we have these exponentially growing technologies which will provide energy, for example. Uh, we have 10,000 times more sunlight than we need to meet all of our energy needs. And uh, we have a vertical agricultural revolution coming which will provide food at very low cost uh, to everyone. We'll be able to print out modules with three-dimensional printers that you can snap together a house at extremely low cost. We'll be able to meet our material needs with 3D printing uh, people are unaware of, of these developments. They're thinking linearly. They're dominated by the negative slant on, uh, by the media. Uh, I've been accused of being an optimist, and to some extent that's true. You have to be an optimist to be an entrepreneur. Uh, on the other hand, I've written about the downsides of these emerging technologies, probably more than anyone and before anyone. I wrote about them in the 90s, in 1999. The Age of Spiritual Machines talked about ways in which we can overcome age-old problems with these new technologies, but also existential new risks of GNR, genetics, which is the biotechnology revolution, nanotechnology, and robotics, which means artificial intelligence. Uh, the chapter eight of my book, uh, The Singularity is Near, and came out in 2005, is called The Deeply Intertwined Promise Versus Peril of genetics, nanotechnology, and robotics. Uh, 
There was a great deal of discussion in the early 2000 years about the dangers that I had posed, uh, the dangers that Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk have identified uh, from artificial intelligence with their dire warnings, are things I wrote about 20 years earlier. Uh, and they're now waking up to this. Oh my goodness, uh, artificial intelligence might be dangerous. Well, technology has always been a double-edged sword. Fire kept us warm, cooked our food, but also burned down our houses. Uh, and overall, we've come out better. Uh, I like to actually pose uh, how well we've done with biotechnology. That's actually an existential risk that has existed for a number of decades. This was recognized over 30 years ago. We had a conference called the Asilomar Conference uh, as to how can we reap the promise of biotechnology, which is reprogramming our biology while avoiding the dangers. The dangers could be some bioterrorist creates a new biological virus in the laboratory that's basically a new weapon. And now it's 30 years later, uh, we, are, we are beginning to get the benefits of biotechnology. What is a trickle of benefits today will be a flood within over the next decade. The number of problems we've had, either through accidental or intentional abuse of biotechnology, has been zero. So these guidelines have worked very well. That doesn't mean we can cross that off our list of concerns and say, okay, we took care of that one because the technology keeps getting more sophisticated so we have to keep redesigning these guidelines. But it's a good template or basic strategy for how to sort of control the existential risks of these new technologies. So I'm not an optimist in the, in the sense that I'm oblivious to these dangers. I've in fact talked about them more than anyone else. And that is, in fact, the major challenge to humanity in the 21st century, is how do we reap the promise of these new technologies while controlling the peril? And I think we have a moral imperative to continue advancing these technologies because there's still a lot of suffering in the world, and these technologies are going to provide the means of overcoming that suffering. Uh, we are already diagnosing disease and curing disease, and cleaning up the environment and improving uh, the economy through technologies like artificial intelligence and biotechnology. And so we need to continue doing that and I think we have the strategies to keep it safe. But, that doesn't, but that's not a sort of oblivious optimism. And I'm not a utopian. I think there will be downsides from these technologies. Uh, and we have to you know, really manage our way through it.